Hi, my name is Matt Wilhelm, and I'm going to be tying a peacock soft tackle, and we're tying at the Federation of Fly Fishers tonight. Um, peacock soft tackle, uh, this is a really, really good fly for the Mother's Day caddis hatch. Uh, what we're going to be using for materials here tonight on this fly, uh, I've got some black thread. This happens to be 6 dot thread, you can use 8 dot. Uh, normally the fly would be tied on a size 14 or 16 hook, but I'm tying it on a 12 tonight. Um, because of uh, the, for, for the camera. Uh, basically, this is a, a Dairiki uh, number 125. It's their emerger hook. It's got a thin wire, and uh, it's really nice. Uh, it's not as heavy as a scud hook, which is going to tend to sink the fly a little bit more. So it's got a lighter wire. It still has that curved uh, appearance to it. So that's the hook we're using tonight. Uh, but when you're tying them for the Mother's Day caddis, you probably want to go with a 14 or a 16. Uh, other materials we're going to use besides black thread uh, for the body, that's peacock. So we're going to use some peacock hurl, peacock hurl for the body. Um, we're going to use a little bit of this stuff called ice dubbing for the thorax. Uh, it gives a really neat, uh, shiny appearance. You can see how it catches the light. Uh, so we're going to use this. I'll tell you why as I'm tying the fly. So that's going to be the thorax. I'm um, going to use a little bit of silver wire uh, for a rib. Uh, you can use gold, you can use copper, you can use pretty much any color for the rib. This will help strengthen the fly. Um, and then for the hackle, we're going to use Hungarian partridge uh, for the soft hackle. All right, so we'll get started here. I'll put a thread base on. I like to go about halfway and then tie on a piece of wire. I'm going to tie a piece of silver wire right here and then continue down the hook with my thread down almost all the way to where it really starts to curve. And then we're going to get some peacock. And since this is a bigger hook, I would usually use on a size uh, 14 or 16 hook, I would usually use about two pieces of peacock curl. But I'm going to, I'm going to select three pieces for this one. I'm going to put three pieces. I'm going to try to find three pieces that are, that are pretty, pretty good and bushy so I get a nice thick body. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put these all together so that they're mated. Get all the tips together. There we go like that. I'm just going to get rid of those. Some people will twist these. I just tend to tie them all on at the same spot. Now, one thing I, I like to do when I, when I tie on materials to the back on a, on a smaller fly is instead of tying them right in by the tips like this, I like to put it a little bit longer onto the shank of the hook because when I tie these in, I want the, the diameter of the body of the fly to be kind of consistent. So I'm just kind of, I'm going to wrap these as I go. If I were just to tie on the tips, I would kind of have, I'd wind up with a kind of a big kind of a glob at the back of the hook. And it probably doesn't make a huge difference to the fish, but it's probably more for the fly tire, but it makes the fly look a little bit better. So I've got three pieces tied in there of peacock. And I'm going to start working these around the hook. I'm going to work this up to about the, oh, maybe about two eye widths, the eye of the hook, about two sizes of the eye back, leave myself a little bit of space and tie these off. And be careful when you tie off peacock that you don't put too much pressure on the thread because you can cut it with the thread. There's no tails on this fly either. Okay, so that's tied off. Now we're going to take the, the wire and we're going to rib this. That'll help make it stronger, plus give it a little bit of shine. And with, with a caddis emerger, um, a little bit of shine is important because what happens when a caddis emerges is that it, when it goes through its pupa stage underwater, it builds up gases in its, in its, uh, in its little shell, or not, not shell, its, um, its case or its cocoon. And when it, when it rises, when it ascends to, through the water, it actually kind of rides those gases up uh, through the water column. So a lot of caddis uh, 
patterns. Uh, Gary LaFontaine was one of the first ones to kind of start adding materials to caddisfly uh, uh, pupa and caddisfly mergers that had some sparkle to them, trying to imitate uh, basically the trapped gases or bubbles that kind of the caddis help to, as that they have attached them as they ascend through the water column. So that's why I'm using this really bright, sparkly peacock colored, it's called ice dubbing. And there's other products out there. It's kind of the consistency of steel wool, really easy to work with. You don't need very much of it. So this will be the thorax. This will give it kind of a glimmery, kind of shiny appearance. Let's put a nice little thin rope on there like that. This will be our thorax. To give credit where credit is due on this fly, my friend Tom Mason, who lives here in town, he's the one that came up with the ice, the ice dubbing trick. And, and this is a great fly for the Mother's Day caddis hatch. Uh, you fish this as a dropper. Um, you can fish it by itself. When, you, uh, when the caddis flies are starting to emerge, uh, this is a really good fly, uh, excellent fly to use. And, um, it really, really catches the fish. But I like to use it as a dropper behind uh, either an adult caddis, like, a, uh, like an elk hair caddis, um, an X caddis, uh, maybe a small stonefly stimulator during the caddis hatch, works really well. Hungarian partridge, when I prepare this feather, what I like to do is uh, on the vein, the center vein of the feather, I take my hackle pliers and clip it right at the very tip, right at the very tip of the feather right on the vein, right in the middle. That, I've got big fingers, so it really helps me to isolate the tip of the feather because we want to get the very, very tip of the feather, and these pliers will do that a lot better than my, than my right hand will. Separates it nice like that, and once it's separated, I can release it, and I still have that little feather tip right there, and I can tie it in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give the bobbin a counterclockwise spin when I'm trying to capture small materials against the hook, a right, if a right-handed fly tire spins the bobbin counterclockwise, the thread will tend to jump back towards your fingers, making it really easy to capture small materials, just like that. A guy named Wayne Llewellyn, who's an amazing fly tire from uh, California, he showed me and a lot of other people, he teaches classes just on thread control really really super little trick hackle pliers i'm going to pinch that soft hackle down now i'm going to try to get two turns out of this you could do you could probably get away with one but i like to do two some people will strip off one side of the soft hackle but i like to just leave the whole feather intact so there's Let's go with that right there. It looks pretty good. This around to tie off that soft tackle. Again, you can, there's some substitutions you can make here. Uh, you can use, instead of peacock curl for the body, um, you can use um, pheasant tail works really well. Uh, Tom Travis ties a fly that has, um, instead of the peacock curl, uses pheasant tail. Uh, you can use dubbing if you want to. Uh, so there's other things that you, you don't have to use peacock curl for the body, but I really like that ice dubbing no matter what on this particular fly. And a couple of half hitches. Forgot my whip finish tool. I normally do a whip finish here, but a couple of half hitches and some head cement will work just as well. Mother's Day caddis uh, can hatch on the Yellowstone River. We're usually the last ones to get it because our water's a little bit colder than the Madison or the Gallatin. Um, we tend to get ours around, depending on what Mother Nature deals us for weather and, and water clarity conditions, we usually get ours around the end of April to early May. Um, some years we don't get one at all because the water's muddy when they come off. Uh, but anyway, but this, this pattern used on the Yellowstone during the Mother's Day caddis hatch, uh, used as a dropper or by itself, um, 
is a great fly. Fish it in the riffles uh, where the riffles uh, start to, where the riffles start out shallow about knee deep and they start to tail out and get deeper. This is a great fly in that kind of transition zone between the real fast water where the caddis larvae are living and where they let go to emerge and they drift into that deeper water. So if you're in that transition water between the shallow riffle water that's around knee deep and the water starts to get deeper like waist deep, this stuff, these work really well in that type of an area. So peacock, uh, peacock uh, soft tackle caddis emerger.